Good to be with you again. It's Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, a common topic and one that I've had many patients and medical students and researchers seek some further advice is about heart stents. Now, heart stents are very useful tools to help, particularly if somebody is having an acute blockage of an artery and we have to open the artery up, or they're very useful, but also useful at controlling symptoms in those patients who have a syndrome called angina. But stents are not without their problem. So again, the key question that you need to ask is firstly, you know, do I need to have the stent? Or is there any other alternative? Medical therapy, sometimes even bypass surgery, if there are multiple blockages, may be an option for you. But again, stents, if we look after them well, can stay there for life. And that's a question that I'm often asked, well, doc, how long is this stent going to last? Well, it's going to last as long as we look after it, and it's going to last forever. You know, it'll last forever so long as we look after it and we control the factors that we know can cause problems inside stents. Now, problems inside stents, you might say, well, what, what could happen with, with a stent? Well, a stent is a foreign material. It's a device. It's a, it's a spring made of mostly metal. And when we place that into the artery, well, sometimes our body does not like any device within it. And it might be a reaction like a renarrowing or, you know, a restenosis, we call it, where the stent actually over time is slowly being covered by excess tissue by the body. And that tissue can become more narrow inside the stent, thereby causing another blockage. So that process is called restenosis. And we know that there are many factors that can cause restenosis. Some of these factors relate to the stents themselves. There are different types of stents, and we'll have a separate video on you know, the types of stents that exist. But you might have heard of terms called bare metal stents or drug eluting stents. And these are different technologies, different generations of stents, whereby we know that the bare metal stents were at higher risk of developing this re-narrowing because they were simply made of a piece of metal or a spring inside the body and that would often become re-narrowed. But in 2003, there were a new generation of stents now that we are using, or several new iterations of these stents called drug eluting stents, whereby we placed a drug around these stents which dissolves in the body over three to six months and that drug is a medication that reduces the body's reaction against the stent, allowing the body to heal nicely, but not to heal excessively, not to develop too much tissue inside, whereby you start getting re-narrowing. But again, these stents are not without problems. We know that if we don't control our risk factors, stents are more likely to become narrowed. Now, these risk factors we have covered in a previous video, but diabetes being one of the major ones. We know that in patients who have diabetes that is poorly controlled, those patients are more likely to build up problems or to develop problems inside their stents. We know that if cholesterol is not maintained at a low level, not only does that cause other areas of the heart and the arteries to progress and to develop more blockages, but we are learning that cholesterol now can actually be found inside old stents. So yes, you heard me right. Cholesterol forms inside stents. And that is a process called neoatherosclerosis or new atherosclerosis, new plaque, new cholesterol deposits that form inside stents. Now, how do we know that? Well, my research has been particularly focused on using a novel method to look inside the arteries of the heart. Now again, this is an invasive technique, but we essentially have a very high resolution camera that can scan inside the arteries of, heart, of the heart and also inside stents. And we can detect these changes where cholesterol is seen to cause re-narrowing in these old stents. And it's not just the simple tissue that the body forms as a, you know, a rejection mechanism, but it's actually cholesterol that builds up inside these stents. So how do we stop that from happening? And that's the key factor here. We need to stop this cholesterol process from developing inside these stents. And we know it's rather 
simple if we can maintain our control of risk factors. But there have been several other um, factors that also we need to take into consideration and I like to explain to my patients that there are medications that can be very very useful to limit the body's formation of new cholesterol inside stents. We know that statins, you might have heard of these statins, of uh, these cholesterol lowering medications, well they are a proven benefit to help reduce the cholesterol forming inside stents. There is another class of medication called ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers and these classes of medications we often use for high blood pressure but again there has been some evidence that they can also be protective. Smoking is a poor prognostic marker. We know that if you continue to smoke after the stent has gone in you are at a higher chance of developing renarrowing because of cholesterol buildup inside the stent. And of paramount importance is also being compliant with medication. Nobody likes to take medications and we know that and I understand that they are costly, they are cumbersome, we often forget to take them but again particularly when you have a stent put in it is critical to be on a set number of medications hopefully for a short period of time but we know that aspirin, we know that another blood thinner called clopidogrel or ticagrelor, these are blood thinners that we often use in combination with aspirin for a period of a few months to up to a year depending on the type of blockage that you had and the types of stents that have been put in but these are critical tablets to stop the stent from renarrowing or developing clot. As the stent is healing inside our body and that takes about 6 to 12 months to heal, it's during that healing phase that there's a very small risk of little clots forming inside these little stents. You can imagine the blood circulating and it sees a little bit of metal in the artery and it tends to clump onto that metal. Well we don't want that to happen and we want to allow the body enough time to form tissue or to cover the metal so there's nothing visible. But during that healing phase we need to protect our patients from building up these little clots. Although the risks are very, very low, we still do recommend these two blood thinners in combination. Statins are important. We know, as I mentioned, they reduce the risk of building up problems not only in other arteries, but also within the stents. And there might be a series of other medications that your doctor might have chosen to use for your heart to help the heart recover, to help blood pressure control, to help your diabetes. So again, there are critical medications we can take. So that was just a short, brief video focusing on stents and what can happen inside stents. In the next video, I'll actually have a few more examples to show you of, well, when stents can go wrong and again these are very uncommon conditions but it's important for you to be aware that stents are prone to some form of failure in the body and some of the things that we can do to help reduce this risk. So again until the next video thanks for joining me bye for now.